Illustrator is a powerful drawing software program offered by Adobe. Anyone, regardless of artistic or computer ability, can use Illustrator to draw shapes and lines, create text, or import graphics and pictures. You can use Illustrator to do a layout for a book, create a web page, and the list goes on. However, the best thing about it is that you can do all these things easily using Illustrator once you learn the program and what different functions and features it provides. Illustrator allows you to create and use vector graphics. Vector graphics use geometrical primitives like points, shapes, lines, curves, and polygons to represent images. These vector graphics are all based on mathematical expressions. A lot of cartoons you see online nowadays are actually vector images that were designed using Illustrator or programs similar to it, such as Macromedia Freehand. By the end of this course, you will know how to create images like that as well. One of the best ways to illustrate all the things you can do with Illustrator CS6 before we teach you is how to show you how different industries and professionals use this program to create what they need. Designers that work in various types of media rely on Illustrator for their creative projects because of Illustrator's vector capabilities. The drawing tools and effects make it essential to almost any designer. Print designers, such as those who create brochures and postcards, can create elaborate artwork with Illustrator. Web designers use it because Illustrator also allows them to export raster formats with little risk of error. A raster file is a grid of X and Y coordinates that create the image. It's also referred to as a bitmap. Video production designers also use Illustrator because it can handle vector for video projects. UI brightness is also now adjustable in Illustrator, which makes it even more appealing. Adobe Illustrator CS6 is the sixth generation of this software program. It seems with each generation, the program keeps getting better and better, but bigger and bigger too. Here's a list of what's new in Illustrator CS6. We'll cover these things more in depth as you progress through the course. If you've never used Illustrator before, these may seem like Latin to you. That's okay. These are all topics we'll cover in the upcoming lessons. Perhaps the biggest change in Illustrator CS6 is that it now offers a 64-bit version. It's not important that you know what 64-bit is, but it is critical that you know why this is so important to you. Previous versions of Illustrator were 32-bit. This means that if you had 16 gigabytes of RAM on your computer, Illustrator could only use up to 3 gigabytes. However, with the 64-bit, it can use all the RAM and speed up processing. It helps to eliminate software crashes and frozen screens when you're working with large, complex files. The Mercury Performance System, which makes interaction more responsive. Now you can keep the flow going when you use Illustrator and experiment in new ways. You can move between tools, panels, options, and layers smoothly. The bristle brush has been optimized for speed and efficiency. You can now create complex designs easier than ever before because of the Mercury Performance System. This is nothing you have to learn to use. It's just a part of Illustrator that makes the user experience easier and better than ever before. Gaussian blur and effects is now faster than before. Also, interaction with the tools has been improved. You can now set a blur radius by simply using a slider and then preview the blur instantly on the artboard instead of having to open another dialog box. Now you can convert raster images to vectors with a new tracing engine. Illustrator automatically senses the right preset to use. Plus, you have more control with an image trace panel with all options for trace in one place. You're going to get cleaner lines and better results because of this improvement. Illustrator now allows you to experiment with different types of repeating tiles and pattern shapes that you can also edit. You can also instantly preview your work. Apply gradients to strokes either along the length of the stroke, the width, or within the stroke. You have control over placement and opacity. You can work with the opacity masks easily now with this button, and much, much more that we'll cover in this course. If you've used previous versions of Illustrator before, you'll find CS6 to be the most intuitive and easiest to use yet. The first step in learning how to use Illustrator is learning how to navigate through it. When you open Illustrator, this is the window you will see. You can take a minute to look at all the options that you have with Illustrator. Go ahead and click on Menus and Toolbars and get a feel for what you can do with Illustrator. These are all things you're going to learn very shortly. 
When you want to start a project or create something in Illustrator, the first thing you have to do is open a new document. To do this, go to the menu bar at the top of the window, click on File, and select New from the drop-down menu. First select a name for your new document and type it into the Name field. Now select a profile. You can select Print, Web, Devices, Video and Film, Basic RGB, or Flash Builder. You'll select the profile by the purpose for this new document. We can also browse other profiles. Selecting a profile is very important because you can also select your settings for the document. As you can see, the profile is set to print by default. For print, we can select the size and bleed. The bleed is the part that's on the sides of your documents where you don't put graphics or text for fear the paper will shift during printing and those graphics or text will be cut off during trimming. Now if we choose video and film as our profile, Illustrator will allow you to input settings for that as well as shown below. Next you'll see that no matter what profile you're using, for instance if we go back to print, it's still going to ask the number of artboards that you're going to use. An artboard is an on-screen design surface. It's where your printable art is located. Let's say we want two artboards. You can have up to 100 artboards per document. Now we have to select how we want to arrange the artboards. The first button on the left is Grid by Row. This arranges the artboards in the specified number of rows. Enter the number of rows into the row box. The next button is the Grid by Column button. Running your mouse over the buttons will let you see what they're called. Select the number of rows you would like in the Rows field. The next button is the Arrange by Row button. This will put all of your artboards in a single row. The next button is the Arrange by Column button. This will put your artboards in a single column. This last button can arrange your artboards from left to right or right to left. By default, the artboards are arranged left to right. Now you can select the spacing between artboards. This is for horizontal and vertical spacing. Now let's click OK to create the new document. As you can see, both artboards show on the screen. These artboards make up our new document. As you create these artboards, you can create them independently. For example, one could be a brochure and the other could be a poster. Or they could overlap. You'll also be able to print them at the same time, or just print one. Illustrator gives you all the choices. The Illustrator Toolbox is located on the left-hand side of the screen. Each individual button represents a tool. The buttons are grouped together by the type of tool. These are all your selection tools. You also have drawing tools, type tools, painting and reshaping tools, symbol, graph, slicing and cutting, and moving and zooming tools. You'll learn how to use all of these. Whenever you use a tool from the toolbox, you'll see the control panel appear below the menu bar. This is the artboard tool options shown in the control panel. As you can see, the control panel is right below the menu bar. You can use panels as well as the control panel to complete tasks with Illustrator. We'll talk more about panels in just a moment. We already showed you the menu bar at the top of the Illustrator window. This is where you'll find all of your menus. You can click on File, Edit, Object, Type, Select, Effect, View, Window, or Help, and a drop-down menu will appear, giving you options all relating to the menu name. For example, all of the options in File have to do with your documents, such as opening, creating, saving, printing, etc. Edit gives you editing options. Again, we'll learn more as we progress. The menu bar is located within the application bar. The application bar also contains a workspace switcher and other application controls. Panels appear on the right side of your screen. Here you can see the color panel. Click on a button on the right and the panel opens out to the left. Here's the brushes panel. 
Illustrator allows you to create a custom workspace. You can move document windows and panels. Also, you can save the workspaces, then switch between them. Let's start with learning to rearrange, dock, and float documents. If you have more than one file open, the document windows appear as tabs. You can see that we have two documents open right now. You can drag a tab document window from one location to another. Let's say we want Untitled 4 to the right of Document 1. Left click and hold Untitled 4 and then slowly drag across to the other side of Document 1 and let go. Now it's moved. If you want to undock or float a document window from a group of windows, all you have to do is drag the Windows tab out from the group, like this, and let go. When we let go of the left mouse button, the document window is out of the tabs and floating on your screen. You can also group different document windows together. So now we have undocked Untitled 4. For example, we have already undocked Untitled 4. But now we want to undock Document 1 and then group the two of them together. So here's how we do it. Left click Document 1 and hover over Untitled 4 and you'll see a blue line appear on the left hand side. That blue line is called the drop zone and that's when you know it's safe to let go of your mouse and they will group. Now let go and they've grouped together. Remember panels are on the right hand side of your Illustrator window. Panels are docked by default or attached to the side of the Illustrator window. You can undock a panel to move it around your screen and place it where you want it to appear. To undock a panel, simply click and hold down the left mouse button at the top of the panel and drag it where you want it to go. Let go of your mouse button when you're finished. To dock a panel, drag it by its tab and place it above, below, or between other panels. You can set preference options to tell Illustrator how you want it to work. You can set preferences for display, ruler units, tools, and exporting information. Illustrator saves your preferences in a file that is launched every time you start Illustrator. The file is called AI Prefs in Windows and Prefs in Mac OS. To open the Preference dialog box, go to Illustrator on the menu bar, then Preferences, then select the preference name. Now you can set your preferences. To set keyboard shortcuts, go to Edit on the menu bar and select Keyboard Shortcuts. Shown are the default keyboard shortcuts for different tools and menu commands. To reach the shortcuts for menu commands, click the drop-down arrow beside Tools. Rulers help you place and measure objects in a window or an artboard. Where zero appears is called the ruler origin. That said, you have two different types of rulers in Illustrator. Global rulers appear at the top and left side of the Illustrator window. The default ruler origin is at the top left corner. Artboard rulers appear at the top and left sides of an active board. If you don't see your rulers, to turn them on, go to View in the menu bar, then Rulers, and Show Rulers. If you're viewing global rulers, you can change to Artboard and vice versa. Once rulers are shown, the Show Rulers option will change to Hide Rulers. Guides help you to align graphics and text. Guides do not print. There are two guide styles, dots and lines. There are two guide styles, dots and lines. To show or hide guides, go to View, Guides, Show Guides. To create guides, first make sure your rulers are showing. So go to View, Rulers, Show Rulers. Now put your mouse pointer on the left ruler for a vertical guide, 
or the top ruler for a horizontal guide. Let's choose a horizontal guide. Left click inside of the ruler and drag your mouse out while continuing to hold down on your left mouse button. Drag the guide where you want it and let go. We're going to create a vertical guide, so we click the left side of the ruler. Click inside the ruler, then drag your mouse out to create the guide. Here's an enlarged view of the ruler so you can see where we clicked and held down the mouse inside of the ruler. Now continuing to hold your left mouse button down, drag over your document and drop the guide where you want it. Smart guides are temporary guides that will appear when you create objects on artboards. Smart guides are turned on by default. You can use them to align, edit, or transform objects or even artboards as they are relative to other objects or artboards. To turn them off, go to View and then uncheck Smart Guides. A grid appears behind artwork. It does not print. To see the grid, go to View, Show Grid. To hide the grid again, go to View, Hide Grid. You can snap objects to the grid by going to View, Snap to Grid. Simply select the object, then drag it to its location. When the edges of the object get within two pixels of the grid line, it snaps in.